hot flames, suffocating smoke, and no way out. In May 2023, a massive construction fire killed two workers in Charlotte, North Carolina, and our investigation found safety failures at the site left them trapped inside as flames consumed the building. I'm T. Chappelle. And I'm Lee Zurich. That fire in Charlotte was just one of more than 4,000 construction fires that take place any given year. On average, there are 60 injuries and five deaths every year. Fire safety experts say all too often these construction fires are preventable. But when contractors fail to prepare, it puts an entire community in danger. Investigative reporter David Hodges exposes a chain reaction of mistakes at the construction site that led to two deaths. Charlotte Fire Department, what's the address of your emergency? You can see how heavy this smoke Charlotte Fire Department, is. what's the address of your emergency? Charlotte Fire Department, what's the address of your Charlotte emergency? Fire Department, what is the address of your emergency? I just got a public safety alert. Charlotte Fire Department, Do not Charlotte Fire Department. call 911 unless you Charlotte have Department. an emergency. Charlotte Fire Department. Fire Department, what is the address of your emergency? It's at South Park Mall in Charlotte. I see a huge fire, black Man, smoke. Man, we are on scene with a four-wheel fire there. Hey, we need to work on getting ladder two out. Hundreds of videos, pictures, and records reviewed, analyzed, and deconstructed by our investigators. Piece them together, and they tell the story of the South Park construction fire. What happened second by second, what went wrong, and what led to the deaths of Reuben Holmes and DeMonte Sherrill building on fire and I can't get out. Firefighters could not reach them. It's getting harder and harder for them to see us. We're going to have to stand out here and see. So Cheryl started broadcasting his calls for help on Facebook Live. Ah! Help! Cheryl's live stream gave us a glimpse of the terror. Ah! Fire safety officials have been sounding the alarm on for years. It saddens me, it disappoints me. Two leading experts, Raymond O'Brocky and Joseph Cervantes, sat down with me to analyze what happened during the fire. It is unfathomable. And what failed to happen that could have made a difference. This TikTok video taken by a construction worker shows a spray foam insulation trailer engulfed in flames. Investigators confirmed this is where the deadly blaze started. Yes, sir, it's a trailer that has some equipment on it. We've sprayed fire extinguishers, but it continues to burn, sir. The flames were unstoppable by the time fire investigators say it was discovered at 8.55. Anytime you have a running piece of equipment that's fuel fired, it has to be attended to, and it wasn't attended to by the construction site. Cheryl and Holmes were on the south side of the sixth floor, directly above the trailer. They were nearly a football field length away from the only staircase in the building. And believe it or not, that's all the code requires. And I think that's inadequate. It's probably one of the reasons the two construction workers couldn't get out. Records show the first call to 911 came more than seven minutes after the fire was discovered by the job site superintendent. And it is 9.02 before 911 is called. What's your reaction? Too long. Seven minutes is way too long. Absolutely, it's too long. I mean, these buildings can be fully involved within 10 minutes. The time was squandered. We're evacuating the building. In fact, the video shows the calls for evacuation didn't start until the end of the first 911 call. We ran every floor yelling, fire, fire, fire. In terms of a, an evacuation plan, is that adequate? No. Nobody's running. Nobody's acting with a sense of urgency. There's so much wasted time here that it's, it's really sad. You see the first large group of workers start to evacuate nearly 10 minutes after the fire was first discovered. The lack of urgency, I think, is just the most critical in this. Builders are responsible for creating a culture of fire safety, and it really starts from the top down. The problem is, is that the builders aren't following the codes because they don't even know they exist. You know, let's not lose sight of the fact that two human beings lost their lives. The building on fire, I'm trapped inside, me and my man. More than 500,000 people have watched DeMonte Sherrill's last moments. It's getting harder and harder for them to see us. Including his mom. The last image I have of him was him basically begging for his life in the building. So 
that's really hard. Onita Cheryl and Willie Mae Holmes wanted to share their pain so that they could tell you their sons didn't have to die. Everything should have been checked out and the people that was working up there had a way to get out from up there. I mean, we had to take tests to get driver's license. So why not make sure all the safety precautions are there for things like this? Videos of the fire are hard to watch for almost anyone. Think about it. Reuben Holmes' mom didn't need to watch a single second. They've tried to show it to me, but I didn't want to see it. To know the safeguards her son and others relied on failed. I think about how he must have felt, you know, in there, and he couldn't get out. He couldn't get out. The families of Cheryl and Holmes have filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the general contractor, Mill Creek Residential Trust, and another subcontractor who was on site. Many of the allegations they make in that lawsuit mirror what we found in this investigation. While ultimately it's up to builders to ensure the code is being followed to make sure tragedies like this are prevented and don't happen, the experts I spoke to say it's also imperative that lawmakers and building code officials are updating the fire code in their states to the most recent standards, and that fire marshal offices across the country receive the proper support and structure so that when they decide to enforce the fire code, it's followed. Reporting in Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm David Hodges. Since our investigation, the state of North Carolina started the process of updating its fire code to specifically address large wood frame buildings like the one that caught fire in Charlotte. One change requires an independent fire safety manager on site doing daily inspections. Another requires the site to turn in a fire prevention document to the local fire department that would outline items such as the number of exits and how to warn people if a fire breaks out. The updated codes are expected to be implemented by January 2025.